Starting as a version 9.117 of the Stats Analyzer, we have introduced a new feature called Batch Manager. Batch Manager allows the user to connect to multiple remote radars and perform a single operation. These operations include things like syncing the radar clock, programming the radar firmware, setting a single variable, as well as saving and loading radar configuration. To begin using the new Batch Operations feature, under Settings of the main form, click on the Setup Remote Radars button. This should open up a new form. On this form, please ensure that the Remote Radars tab, specifically this table, is filled out with appropriate information regarding the units you wish to perform these batch operations. Otherwise, once that is completed, click on the Batch Operations menu item. Then click on the Launch Batch Operations Manager button. This should open up a new form. To begin using the batch operation feature, we must first perform the get status operation, as this will tell us which of these units that we select we are able to establish a communication with. To begin selecting, under the table itself, specifically the select column, either you can select each of these checkboxes pertaining to the units you're interested, or if you wish to perform this operation on all the units, there should be a three dot vertical icon which you can click on, and you should be able to select the alls option. But once you selected the units you're interested in, click the Get Status button located at the very bottom left. As you see, as this operation is running, the UI will be updated within the table itself. So you can see things like the connection state being changed from unknown to found or from unknown to not found with the failure occurring due to whatever reason it may be. Like in this case, we were unable to communicate with the radar. so. And in the other case, the other top three, uh, we found the radars. So once the radar is found, we will populate the radar type column, the firmware version, the silicon ID, mm -hmm. the serial number if applicable, as well as the radar type and uptime. After a successful get status operation, the other operations are now available. Starting with copy config from radars to local file, as well as restore config from local file to radars followed by set a variable, which only sets a single variable to the selected radars, upgrade firmware, sync radar clock to computer, sync radar clock to UTC, as well as sync radar clock to specified time zone. Let us begin by first deselecting all the units and only selecting the ones that we're interested. For our example, we will select the first three. In order to perform sync radar clock to computer, we just have to click this button. Once it's clicked, the radar time column should be updated based on the clock. In our case, it's already set to 3.30, so let's try a different example. Let's try sync radar clock to UTC. As you'll notice, after a successful uh, radar clock sync, the radar time column, each of these cells will be updated. So now it becomes 9.20 p.m. And let's go back to local time again as another example. It'll update it to 3.21 p.m., which happens to be the central standard time. And lastly, we'll use the sync radar clock to specify time zone. When you click this option, a new window will appear. In this new window, you'll be able to select which time zone you wish to sync the clocks to. For our example, we use Eastern time. So I'll click on this option, and then I'll click OK. And there you have it. Any point in time, you can stop the operation by clicking the stop operation button and you'll see the status become operation canceled as well as the progress be set to canceled. Followed by the speed lane pro. So let us deselect the speed lane pro for the meantime. Once you have done that, click on the set a variable button to begin this operation. Once we have successfully read the variables out of the radar, we will show this form. In this form, it allows us to do two things. We can first pick the variables found within the radar. And then two, we can also set either by value. So in this case, if we were to set ST, we can set it to, as an example, to 100. So the ST variable will become 100. Or we can do the set by bit operation, which we either set, clear, or keep the bits as they are. So in set, we'll basically enable, for example, in this case, on the far right, we can see that this top label has been changed from keep to set. 
with the value one on the button as well as with the bit letting us know which position we are setting, clearing, or keeping. Clearing refers to essentially clearing out the bit, setting refers to the setting of the bit, and keeping means we just keep it the value as it is right now. So if it's set, it will remain set. If it's cleared, it will remain clear. For this example, we'll just set the value to 100, this ST variable. So once you have selected your preferred setting, either by value or by bit, at the bottom right, click on the update button. So these two PD420s have been successfully updated to 100 for the ST variable. Now let's move on to the Speedlane Pro. So again, same operation. We'll work again with the ST variable. In this case, I'm gonna use the set by bit operation. Please be aware when you use this and, and understand the implications of using this. In this case, we're just gonna set bit one and bit zero, and we're gonna clear out bit three and bit two as an example. So in this case, our ST variable has been updated to 99 after the setting and the clearing, as well as the keeping of the bits. In order to perform the copy config from radar to local file, which is the saving of the radar configuration to a RCFG file type, you must first select the desired units. In our case, we can do a mismatch of radar types, so we can do PD420s and speed lane pros. This isn't true for some operations, just like restoring the configuration as well as setting a variable and upgrading firmware. But in our case, we are able to do, perform different types of radar types for the copy config from radar to local file. Once you have selected, please click on the copy config from radar to local file to perform this operation. We will first attempt to read the variables, but once that is done, we will see a new window pop up in which we are able to select the folder location which we want to save these files to. By default, this file location will be the My Radar Stats, and it can be changed under the configuration. But once you have selected the folder, these files will be saved into that folder as RCFG files. In order to perform the restore config from local file to radar operation, you must first ensure that all the selected radars match with the same radar type. In our case, I'm going to perform this operation only for PD420s, so I'm going to deselect the Speedlane Pro. Once those radars match, click this arrow and then click on the restore config from local files to radar. This should open up a new window in which you select the RCFG file that you wish to program the variables back into these radars. So in this case, I will select this one and this will pop up a new window. In this new window, we select which variables we're interested in programming and it's broken off into two sections. One section is variables that we recommend for programming as these won't cause issues if you were to perform these in batch operations. And a second section is for variables that we do not recommend or either that, that you would have to be very careful if programming. One thing to note, whenever you see a row highlighted in orange, it represents that a variable doesn't exist in any of the selected radars. So please be careful when you're programming this. Otherwise, whenever you select a variable from the not recommended, you will see the following pop up appear when you click OK. You will get a warning asking you to please understand what you're doing when it comes to programming these variables. And if that you are certain about programming these variables, the type in confirm and then click OK. As you can see, as you type in confirm, the text box will become green and the OK button will become available. In our demonstration, we will not do this. So we'll continue by clicking OK after deselecting the LP variable. In order to perform the upgrade firmware operation, you must first select radars with the same radar type. In this example, we will focus only on the PD420 and deselect the ones with the Speedlane Pro. Once you have done that, click on the upgrade firmware button. Afterwards, you will have to find the correct firmware file you wish to program these radars with. When selected, click open. This operation will take some time and we do not recommend you to stopping this operation once it has started.
Once the upgrade firmware operation has finished, you'll see the firmware column as well as the progress and status bar update. 